Hello and welcome to the Hard Questions. I'm Solomon Serwanja. On this episode, I host the Lord Mayor of Kampala City, that is Honorable Elias Ukwago, to speak about what has been his achievements since he gained this office in 2011, the current challenges that the city is facing, and what are his plans. Lord Mayor, thank you so much for accepting to speak to us. Well, it's my pleasure. I also thank you for offering me this opportunity to have a conversation about your city because it doesn't belong to me. It's a city for all of us, all the stakeholders. About 1.5 million people according to 2014 National Census. Yeah, it's outdated. I think uh, they needed to update that figure. Uh, the latest figure we have from your boss because it, there's his estimation. Mm -hmm. saying it's close to 4 million people. Roughly, if you are, talk, you are talking about the day population, mm -hmm. those who reside in the city, the figure is not known. So th those figures are a, a bit old. Okay, they were made way back in 2014. That's the last census we had, which is a very absurd. And we have made a call. Uh, national census should be conducted. Of course, it is done every after 10 years. The next one is 20, 2024. Mm. That's when they are going to conduct another census. But for the case of cities, mm. it shouldn't wait for 10 years. No, I don't think it is, it is proper. No, well, I agree with you. It becomes mm. difficult with the planning. Definitely. Yeah. You, you need to have a comprehensive planning when you have those accurate figures, yes. Mm. Lord Mayor, mm. you came in office in twenty. 11, the people of Kampala have trusted you and put this city in your able hands term after term. <laughs> and you can't say term after term. You, you're suggesting there are so many. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're in 2023, and that's over how many years? Over 10 years. With all the turbulences. Of yes, course. with all the turbulences. You've been mm. there as Lord Mayor since 20 2011. Yes. Now, one of the functions, according to Section 11 of the Act on which you operate, is to initiate strategies and programs for the development of the capital city. That is your primary function as the Lord Mayor. How would you rate yourself in terms of your performance since you took office in 2011? It starts with uh, asserting the authority of the people, the will of the people. Because ultimately, what is, when you break down the role of a political leader is to guide the people on the journey to transform Kampala into a functional city, which I have really tried. It, 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 you see, the assessment you are talking about will be yours, but I've tried my level best. At least I'm satisfied, given the environment I've explained. I have tried my level best to come up with good policies for the transformation of Kampala, including uh, having, I mean, engagements with the, the donor communities, the development partners, engagement with all the stakeholders, generating a, I mean, debate on the trajectory we should take as a city. Which kind of city do you want? Lord Mayor, for the 10 years you've been in this office, you want to be remembered as a person who just triggered conversations and debates. Mm. Right? But, but that's not the only aspect. What can you tell the residents of Kampala that during my tenure as Lord Mayor, I was able to actually do this, do this, do this? And we'll get to the accountability and oversight role um, later on in this interview. What do you want, in, for the 11 years you've been in office, what can you tell a resident of Kampala that this is what I have done? You want me to enumerate all the things that I have done here? Your success, something that you say, during my tenure as the Lord Mayor, this is what I leave behind. This is where you go wrong. If there is anything developmental you have witnessed in Kampala, during the period you are talking about, then there is my input. And where you people go wrong is trying to begin personalizing achievements. 
and say this is Rukwago's achievement, this is uh, the executive director's achievement, this is the uh, director's uh, director for this this achievement. No. Personally, I believe in a collective and shared vision, a collective and shared vision and a collective uh, agenda, shared agenda. So you, you should have that holistic approach to this whole question of the transformation of Kampala. So if, for instance, there has been any slight improvement on the face of Kampala, Say 2011, when I joined as the Lord Mayor, that the city on its journey to the uh, promised land where we want it to be, at least has moved from point A in 2011 to point B in 2023. Then what contribution has Rukwago made towards that fraction of the development for the city? I've told you, for you to see any development in a place, they are policy makers. If, whether it's in terms of infrastructure development, you want to ask me which road I have constructed personally? Yes, I'm not the engineer who does that. I am not even a member of the contracts committee, yes. I am not even uh, uh, signatory to any of the contracts. I don't do the procurement. But my role to say this road should be constructed. We need to wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Then I say, this road should be constructed. Yes. Where are the architectural designs? Yes, this is the road we need in the city. We need the money. Where should it come from? If government of Uganda has not provided money, say let's go to World Bank. Let's go to Africa Development Bank. Let's go to JICA for the flyovers. All these roads you see under Kampala Institution and Infrastructure Development Project. All those issues you, you look at, I play a significant role when it comes to engagement with the donor community. That is one. Two, discussing the same in the council and agreeing on which road should be given priority as against the other. Three, and most critical or fundamental, oversight, accountability, probity, value for money. And this is where I have scored largely because I have come out to say, please look here. Is it worth for one to say a kilometer costs 10 billion Uganda shillings? And you mentioned Account that, for this. And you mentioned it in your report, yes. actually. And, and, and you said in, on page 35 of, of this report that you were sharing, and which is on record, that what? you were actually angry and you said, and I quote, as you will not therein later, we have issues with the unit cost of roads, which is staggering at approximately 10 billion shillings per kilometer. Mm. We are deeply concerned by the sloppiness and incompetences exhibited by some of the contractors, which has resulted into uh, terrible delays and shoddy works on some sections of the road. This exactly. is something, and, and you've raised a red flag. That is that. a state of the state address which I delivered, yes. Exactly. Mm. And, and you mentioned this, but I, I don't want you to get away with it but by just saying that you've raised the red flag, which is really good. And you said you've scored very well on this issue of, of oversight. But you pass the budgets as council. You have the right to actually question and say, why did you spend 10 billion shillings? Or even for the next financial year to come and say, look, you have the infrastructure committee that looks at this. Can we actually refuse to pass this budget if it's not amended before the money is actually put onto the account for implementation? So you, in your role as oversight, you have the powers to actually do something about it rather than to just raise the torch and red flag on such expenditures. If you care to follow what I've been doing, it's not only about raising the red flag. It's not about raising dust like you were suggesting. No. I have been, in all my act operations, I am action-driven. Action-driven in a sense that I look at what is within the scope of the office of the Lord Mayor that you can do. For example, I am enjoined to put in place the Public Accounts Committee, which Public Accounts Committee comprises of certified public accountants, five of them, and their role is to audit our books of accounts. I did that. 
and they have done a superb, a superb job. All the figures you are seeing there is courtesy of their work, is thanks to the works of the Public Accounts Committee, which starts with this uh, raw information presented to us. The next thing I have to do is to process the, the reports they have given us. One, by forwarding it to council, which I regularly do for debate, because these are people's representatives. They even have committees, the audit committee, chaired by a particular councillor, and they have to process the same. I don't pretend over council. From there, the reports, these same figures, I mean, these same issues, audit queries, they go to the auditor general, and then they end up in parliament. So I've always been methodical in pursuing all this. I've even generated petitions before parliament, going out of my way, because it may not even be my obligation to raise this on the floor of parliament. We have a minister for Kampala. You look at section 55 of the KCC Act. No, to, uh, article, article 58 of the KCC Act. It, 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 it gives a dual mandate to the Lord Mayor the executive and the executive director on the one hand, and then the minister for the central government to cause the reports of public accounts committee to be implemented. Action should be, action should be derived from the reports and some people should, should face the wrath of the law. So if there is impunity in the country, do you blame it on me? No, but you have a role if to If there is impunity. You have, yes, there is that bit of so the, notem that you present into the Auditor General's report and you take it to Parliament. But as a council, you approve budgets. You will say that we will not approve this budget until when this is You revised. see, the budget is ours. It's like you were in your home and you refuse to approve your own budget. It doesn't work that way. When actually the institution that can refuse to pass our budget is parliament. To say you have not accounted for this money. The road mayor has raised ABCD. But for our case, we do the appropriation. Look, it's the budget we pass is not for the executive director. It's not for the minister. It's for the people of Kampala. And yes, we crack the whip. Uh, within our limited powers against the errant public officers who may have squandered the public funds and also the companies that do show the work like I highlighted in that report. But it, that wouldn't uh, I mean, mean that we, 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 we shouldn't have a budget because a budget entails, has so many things. It's, it's a whole, whole instrument that provides for the funding of the entire institution. So if there are aspects which raise audit queries, those ones, we raise them. And then we call for action. Where we are mandated to take action, we do so. But I've told you, realize when you study very much the nature of the, 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 the powers given to us within the act, very limited. Very limited that I don't even have powers to suck. The executive day. I wish we had the powers that we can suck the executive. So Wait I, a minute. So I wish we had the powers to suck directors here. Let me tell you this. If we had the powers to suck directors, to suck, to interdict the ED or suck the ED, we would have done this long time ago. You get it? But you, you've said the same for Jennifer Musisi's tenure when she was executive director. You're and we very much this, wanted to interdict her. You're saying the same for the current executive director. So No, you are misquoting I, me to, when I talk about the She's not the only one we have had. We have had several executive directors. So you, we you, had Jennifer Samakula Musisi. Yes. We, so had, and, we, had, to actually we, we had the, Andrew Chitaka here. Yes. He was also executive director. Yes. We have had the Chisaka. Chisaka now. So I'm Who speaking in a through, generality. Which is, which is that what you're saying. At least one of them. We, we, at least one or two or all of them, if you may say. We could call them to order by way of interdiction. But you don't have those powers. So As a council, you, so I don't have powers. Like, for example, the council here. Lord Mayor and the council, we can't sit and say, you the director legal, you are responsible for this uh, loss. We are, you have occasioned financial loss 
For example, we have lost a lot of money in shady transactions, in bogus cases. We have lost in lots of monies where they have entered into consent judgments and whatnot. And at some stage, I even made a recommendation together with my colleagues as a SEC to counsel that action should be taken against, for example, the director legal, the current director legal. We made a recommendation that since he's in acting capacity, did the executive director interdict? So, but we do not have powers to, to do that. If we had those powers, for example, like ordinarily how it should be, you would see heads rolling here. You've raised the issue of 10 billion shillings, and I'm sure you would that see heads. Let me tell you this: you would see ro heads rolling, even uh, in a number of sectors. In a number of sectors, not only infrastructure development. No. Even those who are responsible for the collapsing structures, how many have been interdicted? How many have been prosecuted? That means you. you we have made recommendations after recommendations. This is what I'm telling you. So what do you do after the with the names mentioned? So what do you do after recommendation? This is exactly what I'm telling you. I wish we were given powers to crack the whip, to prosecute or cause prosecution, interdict or sack. I wouldn't hesitate to invoke those powers to sack some people here. I'm not that kind of person who would sit on those rights if they were vested in the office of the Lord Mayor. But the institution where we report they had to take action. Now we, have, we are trying parliament. We have sent so many cases to the office of the IGG. And the other day, even the minister, the state minister for Kampala, Chofa Togabi said, ah, what can the IGG do? You get it. He has he had even the audacity of rubbishing the office of the IGG. We have raised the issues to do with inflated costs on, on these infrastructure developments. They have moved away from 10 billion per kilometer. That is under the, 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 the World Bank alone to close to 15 billion Uganda shillings per kilometer under the current ADB loan, where we have rolled out a number of roads to be constructed. And this is the reason we have called for the intervention of parliament, the intervention of, uh, uh, of the IGG and other agencies. So because for us, we are incapacitated when it comes to cracking the whip. We don't have those powers. I wish I had those powers. Even those who are involved in the procurement or purchase of that 350 billion, 370 billion land in 10 acres, just 10 acres that they want to resettle street vendors. I wish I had the powers to take action against the individuals involved. I wish. So this is what I'm telling you. The best I can do within the powers given to the office of the Lord Mayor and the, by extension, even the powers given to all the elected leaders is to generate those recommendations for actions to be taken by other different authorities. Right. But in a country where impunity prevails, what can you do? For such a person like you who is so centered about service delivery, it means this office is becoming very hard for you. Why don't you resign? Who tells you? It's tough to make recommendations and they're not acted on. You see, because you, you're passionate what, about what is not so difficult. City. You're trying your best. Survival alone, let me tell you, survival alone in this country is difficult, is hard. So, are you suggesting I should become a refugee elsewhere because even survival is a problem? <laughs> so, if you tell me to resign from KCCA because of the hardships, the, 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 cost, I mean the, the hurdles we are encountering, if that should be the reason, then I should, res I should run away from this country. Maybe there's another reason why you should resign. Kampala Capital City has a total of 2,110 kilometers of road network. Only 8% of these roads have been paved now. 30%. 30%, sorry. 30% of them have been paved. But even the paved component is also full of portal. It's not moderable. My goodness. Mm. Lord Mayor, how do you feel when you're driving in this city? And you have to navigate potholes that have actually contributed to accidents in the capital city, wherever you go, it's actually pathetic to drive on the streets of this city that you call beautiful. And you are the helm of this city. And you're supposed to actually hold your teams and everyone accountable to have a better city in office for 10 years, Lord Mayor. 
It, isn't it an indictment on you that you failed us as a people of Kampala? Myself, I find it a nightmare uh, navigating the potholes, as you have said, in Kampala here. It's horrible, pathetic, despicable, totally unacceptable that you have a jungle, or rather you have a city the way it looks like currently, in the state in which it is. You call it the capital city of the Pearl of Africa. It's a national shame. I've tried to do a study to compare our city to any other African city where you have that, that, that kind of road network. I'm yet to come, to come across any. Where you have a total road network of 2,110 kilometers, only 600 and 20. Plus 620, which is paved. Not even a half of that road network is paved. And even the 620 kilometers have also got potholes. So, so you don't find that city anywhere passing off a capital city. And yet this is the city that you boast yes. to be alone there. Yes. If there is anyone who is saddened by that state of affairs, I am number one. And that's why I speak with lots of emotions about these issues. But I get all frustrations when you see the people you were asking to help you take action, adopting what I would call iconoclastic attitude. Iconoclastic meaning, I don't care. It's none of my business. You get it? I'm tired of that. You know, we are tired of your talk. We are tired of your lamentations. All we want is action. I mean, development. But I'm telling you the stumbling block in the way to the uh, the journey we, are, we want to walk because we, laid, we, we, we put in place a strategic plan. It's aligned to the National Development Plan. It's aligned to the SDGs. It's aligned to Vision 2040. It's aligned to all those international instruments, protocols, whatever proclamations you can mention in all spheres of transformation in the Kampala. But key to that, Agenda 2030, by 2030, we must have a, 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 a vibrant, attractive, livable, functional, sustainable, and inclusive city. That is our mission and vision. And we wanted to make it more ambitious, by the way. In the current strategic plan, which is uh, aligned to the National Development Plan 2021-2025, we put our strategy, I mean, our target to 2025 that what we intended to achieve by 2030 under the SDGs, we can achieve it in five years. With 30% of roads unpaved. With 30% of the and roads. And potholes in those roads. With the kilometer being constructed at 15 billion Uganda shillings. Then all of you people at the helm of and this Mark you, should go. Mark you. This is because money. you have failed this city. This is borrowed money. Lord Mayor, you are a leader in mm. this city. When mm. you see these things happening, you, you and your entire authority should just go and we put competent people to lead No, this, no, no, no. You are to, being, to transform us. No, you are being because kind. You're crying just like us, the, the no, people of Kampala. No, actually. You, you, you are lamenting like us. You're not giving us solutions and we, we expect that you have the solutions because you sit in a center of power and center of authority. You should make it better by saying the entire regime should go. The entire crop of leadership in this country should go. Because what, is you, what you are talking about in the Kampala is a microcosm of what is happening elsewhere in the country. Where is the, things are better? Just tell me. Yes, I agree, Kampala is a capital city, but you have other cities. You have other districts. You have the central government. Are things any better elsewhere? So when you talk about and you focus on me and my colleagues at Kampala here, I think that is to miss the point. Lord Mayor, we're talk still talking about unpaved roads. Mm. In your report, you continue to cite and say 
that only 8% of the roads, the 2,110 no. kilometer roads, have no. lights. Oh, yes. Think about that. Only 8% of the roads in this city which are paved, or actually, because I don't think you can put traffic light, you can put lights on unpaved roads. <laughs> only 8% have street lights. It's really buffering, I agree. And um, to be exact, there are 5,000 poles in the city where we need like 45,000 according to the studies we have conducted. You need at least 45,000 poles to light up the city, but you have only 5,000. We realized all this and they came up with a, a mega plan. Call it a grandiose plan on how to light up the city. We shared this vision with the, the French government. The and French the, Development Agency. That is the development agency. Yeah. But it has to be under the French government. Yeah. So AFD offered us a loan and uh, it was meant to facilitate uh, the lighting of the city, the whole of Kampala with at least 20,000 poles not only on the streets, but even in the common user places, uh, places where you find the communities like markets, places of worship, parks and whatnot, all those places, so that you have a city which is well lit to reduce on cases of insecurity and also to make nightlife easy. You know, Kampala is nightlife. I don't know you people, you are the ones who enjoy nightlife. I'm not uh, a nightlife person. But I don't know how you enjoy nightlife here in Kampala. Kampala, which is dark like that. I don't know how people enjoy nightlife in Kampala. Anyway, that's a discussion for another yeah, but, day. But now, what is but happening you ought with to that? Do something, Lord Mayor. You've been here for a No, no, no. I'm telling you the steps taken. That loan was approved okay. by uh, the French government. And uh, we discussed it with the, the former ambassador of USA here, I mean, of France and the head of the French Development Agency. And we embarked on the process of pursuing the same. But what is happening? The deadline was 2022 for everything to be finalized. We finished the year when government is still sitting on the papers. Can you imagine? The documents relating to that project are with the central government. They are in the cabinet. From there, there is another step of going to parliament. You now ask those who are in the government, you ask the minister for Kampala, you ask even the state minister who is here making a lot of noise, Kerere, Chofa Togabye here, pa, 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 making a lot of noise, Linda Chalacha type. You ask him, what is it that you are doing in the cabinet? Why don't you pursue that loan so that we get our street lights here and we have the street, I mean the city lit? Why don't you pursue that matter? Vigorously. So, you blame that on me? Do you want me to just go into cabinet and force Mr. M7 to sign the, the papers? Or to force whoever is responsible in the central government to sign the papers? Do you want me to do that? Or you want me also to take responsibility for that when for us we played our role? So those are some of the challenges we are facing here. Now the central government claims they hijacked the management and administration of the city. But at the same time, when it comes to action, they are, it's just politics. Actually, all they are doing here is just politicking. And it pains me terribly when they accuse me of politicking, when indeed, actually, they are the ones who are politicking. I, I, I just don't know what's wrong with this city. Quite honestly, it, it's a disappointment that we have people at the helm of this city and we fail to just deal with some of those basics. You can't even things. talk about this, the basics. I, I am actually looking at your report with city floods and, mm. and, 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 and the sewerage system. And it's quite The, the sewer system. The that's, sewer system. Yes, that could be the mandate now of the National Water and Sewage Corporation. And we remember Mr. Seven talk about, talking about... Uh, proliferation of different authorities and agencies. We suggested that they should phase out National Water and Sewage Corporation. It should be phased out. 
That should be our role. When the sewage overflowing in the taxi park here, the very first person to blame is the Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, you actually make several recommendations in this report that have to be done to have a safer city. You spoke about the issue of border border management, which has also become a menace. You, of course, highlighted that they are beginning to charge um, 60,000 per, per, per border border, which is not accepted. And you, you make so many uh, recommendations in this report from waste management, so many things. When, when anyone reads this report, it, 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 it sort of paints a picture that you have this city at heart and that you have been challenged by the people who are supposed to implement some of the recommendations of the council. And, and from this, I gather that you are you know, lamenting, but also having hope that if I push and raise the red flag, something will be done. Lord Mayor, where do you see this city in the next few years of your leadership at the helm before your tenure ends? Where do you see this city and what is going to be priority for you that before you leave office, you're going to tell people that when I was in this office for the so many years, this is something that I did. And I will drive on this road knowing this, this was my contribution to this city. Where do you see this city in the next few years that you're still in office as Lord Mayor? Well, it may sound paradoxical that a person who is supposed to give you hope for a better tomorrow, a better city, um, telling you that... Uh, Please scale down your expectations. And that may sound a little disappointing to you because all you want from me is a message of hope that you are going to see a functional city tomorrow. That would be a lie. Uh, myself, I'm a realist. And I always want to be true to myself. And... Uh, I take honesty as a virtue. Honesty as a virtue. So truth be told, Kampala has gone to the dogs. Very, very unfortunate. Whether it is redeemable, that's another matter. Why I'm saying it has gone to the dogs? One there is no clear plan, and I've struggled all my life here at KCCA to have a structural plan, a, what you'd call a master plan. But all my efforts have been fatted by the powers that it be. Very, very unfortunate. All my years, I've struggled to steer the authority to craft that campus because it doesn't require rocket science to get to understand that for you to have a transformation journey, you must, it must be guided. And that journey, we must walk it together anyway. But you don't ask, can't you ask yourself that, by the way, if I may check online or anywhere in the records of KCC or on the website, do I see a structural plan that we would use as a benchmark to judge our movements, our agenda, our transformation journey? Because you would be asking, yes, what are the targets? What are the deliverables? Which kind of, which kind of city do we want to build? By the way, even if you're building a home, you have that architecture design. The architecture design is there. Even on construction site, that architecture design is displayed there on the board for you to see the structure, how it will look like when complete. And at, at, at a level of conception, 
you also have to have that vision and say, oh, this is how Kampala will look like in 10 years to come, 20 years to come, 30 years to come. But right now, you ask yourself, which one is the industrial area of Kampala and how is it expanding? Which one? Which one is the residential area of Kampala? Which one is, which is the CBD? Which one is the administrative center where offices are concentrated? That if you wanted to have an office, for example, an administrative office, you would say probably, ah, 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 this is the area where you should go. If you wanted to have an industry, if you, you may be amazed right now to find in one locality, you find somebody's home next to a church, next to, next to a factory, next to a mosque, next to what? Next, then there is the, that office, and then there is somebody doing farming, they are burning farming. Cows all over. Cows the all over, what goats and what not. So that is the state of affairs. We, I've mentioned time and again, we got consultants from Israel and South Africa to help us reconfigure Kampala. And the fundamental question we pose to them is Kampala redeemable? He said, yes, we need to make a quick intervention or else it will go to the dogs very soon. That is a decade ago. So won't I be justified to say now, 10 years later, no interventions have been made that the state has gone to the dogs. We have the Kampala Multimodal Transport Plan to date. It's not being implemented. Where you are telling us you're going to do train, Train, trams. Do you have... You know, I actually thought you're going to do undergrounds. Certainly tubes. Underground tubes, tubes yes. light rail and what you know. in Chavaka, they will just get into yes. a tube and I'm home. Yes, all the systems speaking to each other. I remember you unveiled it. I think it was Definitely. Jennifer Bustici at the time. But it is a shelved. You unveiled it and we are all excited. Shelved. All the plans, street lighting master plan, shelved. I've told you about that street lighting master plan. The education master plan, shelved. Right now they are giving 9,500 shillings per child in UPE schools in Kampala. We have just rolled out the ambulance systems here, but we still have health center threes here in Kampala. Chitevi, Komamboga, Chida. No, Chida is outside the Kampala. You can talk about, no, Chiswa is a health center for, but a couple of them. So that is the state of affairs. And the worry is, those of us who are coming up aggressively to change the trajectory, we are being maligned, we are attacked, and the, the, the people you are serving, like you, the elites especially, have no idea of exactly what it is that they are supposed to do, apart from just bashing us. So what do you expect? So this is why I'm telling you, I'm afraid the city is getting from, from, worse, from bad to worse. The city is getting from bad to worse and is getting plunged into a deep abyss. It's being plunged down there in an abyss. And that is the state of affairs, I'm afraid. But bottom line, as long as we don't have a structural plan, and I've put emphasis on this. In the six pillar program, I emphasize this. Everything else will not work out. You can't have a functional city without a clear plan. I think that is simple logic. But you have plans. Simple logic. You, you've no, you those piecemeal plans. plannings are there. Now I'm talking about the grand master plan. The master plan. You call it a master plan. Because all these plans stem from that. They have to feed into that. I'm talking about now the paradigm, the frame. In my language, you call it akativa. So that structure plan, that master plan is the kativa. So what is that master plan? I've given you the, 
the example of a structure you are building, a building yourself. It has to have that. So that is one worrying thing. The other worrying thing is about the limited funding. That uh, the budget is dwindling year in, year out. They are just slashing it every financial year. They are slashing it. And this coming financial year, it's even going to be worse. Because on the budget line for construction of roads, at least government funding was 70, 80 billion. Now they have reduced it to 10 billion. And in a country where, in a city where we are grappling with the inflated unity cost, so 10 billion will construct only one kilometer. That's the whole financial year. <laughs> so, <laughs> but look, Wago, is it true that one kilometer costs One kilometer costs 10 billion. They will justify it with Which things. road was that? There are so many roads. One kilometer of road. Go into that report. Is it factually right? Get into that report. I'll give you also my own record here from even the technical wing. Bunamwaya Reza Road is 80 kilometers. It cost 93 billion Uganda shillings. The justification is that on the either side of the road, there are walkways for non-motorized mobility. And they also they were supposed to put trees there. But instead of trees, they put garden flowers there. Lukulinanganda, it is 70 kilometers, 70 billion Uganda shillings. So how much is that? You ask again about this Akashi Avenue, Kurambiro Lingi Road and Stretcher. Akashi Avenue. Yes, Akashi Avenue, it's nine kilometers, 90 billion, 94 billion Uganda shillings. So how much is it, a kilometer? And in this ADB run, we have lined up 31 roads in total constituting 69 kilometers. The, the, the total sum is 288 million US dollars, which translates to 1 trillion. You multiply it, now you calculate it and get the unit cost. Just divide it, 1 trillion as again 69 kilometers. Definitely you will get roughly 15 billion Uganda shillings. So the justification they will give that they are going to have markets, they are going to have toilets, markets, what, what, what. But that, those are not components of the road. You can't, the, the two are non-concomitant. You can't talk of those are non-concomitant things. So you get it. So that's why I'm sorry I'm painting a, a, grim, a, grim, a grim picture of what the city is going to look like. But I'm just awakening you up. I'm just waking you up, rather. I'm trying to reawaken you to appreciate the gravity of the challenge we are confronted with. I don't want people to paint a rosy picture when the situation is moving from bad to worse. This is the whole thing. Right now, our budget is less than 400 billion. Yet, from our projection in the strategic plan, on the structural plan, somebody will, one will argue that you, I'm contradicting myself. The structural plan is different from the strategic plan. Strategic plan is just development plan for five years. From in our five-year development plan, our estimation is that we need at least 1.5 trillion every financial year. But the government is able, including donor funding, to provide only 400 billion. So, what would that tell you? And all this man, and the biggest chunk of this money is siphoned off. This case is KCC is used as a conduit by the cartels. So that's the challenge. During this interview, you've spoken about the cartels within KCC. And the, the central government. And the central government. It's Tell a big network. It. There's a very big network of cartels. They cash in on your cri in the crisis in the city. How? The uh, crisis merchants. You see how they come and give you a rosy picture of what is going to happen in the city. You get excited. And then eventually they siphon off the money here. Like this ADB run, 288 million US dollars. A lot of it is going into those, uh, those cartels. A lot of it. ADB money, that's how it went into cartels. 
They are now uh, salivating over this money, which is going to buy 300, I mean 10 acres in Kisenyi for street vendors, ostensibly. 370 billion, 100 million US dollars. 10 acres, each acre 10 million or 38 billion, 37. They are there scrambling for it. They are cashing in on the, on the, on the plight of the vendors who are looking for workspaces. And we have told you in our budget, we said we must create workspaces. Let's build at least two markets in each and every division. They have not allocated even a single coin. So which kind of city is that? In a, uh, we've talked about solid waste management. In a country where we are supposed to have uh, recycling plants, we don't even have capacity to buy garbage trucks. Our projection was that at least we have one garbage truck per parish because we have 99 parishes. We are not provided even a single coin in this current budget. Of course, in the previous budget, there, were, there was a provision for 10 garbage trucks, which we are still st struggling to procure. But in this current budget, there is nothing. So, that is the situation. The cartels get this money back, and you are shielding them in the media. Tell us to those cartels. I've told you, these cartels are all over Kampala. They are in the central government. You'll hear them speak about these projects. You'll, you'll hear them speak about the grandiose plans. They will be speaking good of everything that you are doing and ill against the likes of Rukwago. They will be maligning us. They will be doing this and that. And you will be uh, praise singing for them. That's what you'll be doing. Elias Rukwago, thank you very much for speaking to us. It's a pleasure. Those are my views. Uh, one thing I love about myself, I speak out my conscience. I speak out my mind. My mouth resonates very well with my conscience. That's the beauty with me. I, I see people struggling to wrestle with their conscience. That's not me. So whatever I've said here in this show, which does not please you, just take it as is, because that's me. I always feel comfortable and at ease, at peace, when my mouth here is in sync with my conscience. That's all I want. Lord Mayor Elias Rukago, thank you. Thank you. Well, I've been speaking to the Lord Mayor of Uganda's capital, Kampala, the Lord Mayor Elias Sukwago on the state of the city. I'm Solomon Serwanja, and this is The Hard Questions.